the possible responses to consultation take two specific forms, and that came out very well, I thought, in the interviews. Either you can argue that, well, consultation is fine, will lead to a good solution, it is possible indeed to come up with, a, with the views of the community, provided the consultation process is well done. And so a number of people argued that the consultation process was fundamentally flawed. And that it might be possible with a proper consultation process to come up with a proper consensual arrangement. I would argue that such a perspective still insists on a techno-managerial approach that presumes a homogeneous community. The other response, of course, is to say, I radically disagree with what's going on. Um, I am part of this a community, um, and the existing processes of policy making do not permit me to express what I want. So therefore, ironically speaking, in a context in which the sort of consultation consultation processes that we've seen unfolding, the only response possible is to go to the act of interruption. And that is what camping is all about. This is an act of interrupting. This is rupturing the process of trying to find a consensual view by insisting that there is a heterogeneous bit of the community that disagrees but that cannot have a voice yeah. um, that, is, that can be expressed within the institutional forms of consultation. So protest of the kind of a radical intervention that is occupying the park has become in many instances one of the few options open among those members of the heterogeneous community that disagrees with. And that is what I mean by the foreclosure of the political. That is to institutionally disavow the inherently conflicting and heterogeneous character of a community, which is nonetheless precisely what the democratic is all about. The democratic presumes precisely that the community is split, is heterogeneous, that people disagree and sometimes radically disagree. So a proper democratic institutional configuration is one that avows that disagreement, that permits this contestation, that argues ultimately, that consensus is not possible. You cannot have, you cannot have a planning or a public policy that is infinitely open. Yeah. And that's why I always had many difficulties with this notion of, of open planning, flexible planning, uh, adaptive planning, etc. These attempts to, to get away from the determinist sort of, we're going to do X and that's fixed. That that was not the best idea, fine, but then to go all the way around saying, well, with flexible, open procedural planning, etc., we can keep things perpetually open, uh, permit new voices to be heard the whole time. Well, but then you don't do anything. You know, at some point, you've got to close down temporarily, temporarily, you know, in, in order to permit to open up again. It's that dialectic. You know, and any moment of closing down suspends the democratic understood as the equality of each and every one to a certain extent. Let's accept that. And what did that do? You know, I think that's absolutely vital and should be acknowledged rather than disavowed. And that's what I mean by post-politics. Post-politics is the disavowal of that tension.